lot of people are confused by the results of the COVID-19 vaccine studies that are published and talked about in the media. Even many journalists reporting on these results seem to be confused. By now, we've all seen, we've all read and heard from multiple sources that Moderna's and Pfizer's vaccines are close to 95% effective. And many of you made what is clearly an honest and logical mistake of thinking this means that 95 out of every 100 people who get vaccinated will have protection. But that is not what the studies showed. As an example, let's take a look at Moderna's vaccine. Near the end of 2020, they announced that their phase 3 study was showing a vaccine efficacy of approximately 95%. So let me show you the type of mathematics they did to get to this number. And for the sake of simplicity, I'll use approximations. So the study enrolled about 30,000 participants. Half were given the vaccine, while the other half received a placebo. So let's do this table. 15,000 get the vaccine, 15,000 get the placebo. Now, it's important to note that these people were not locked in a room in some hospital and deliberately exposed to the virus. No, that's not how these conventional trials work. What actually happened is after receiving either the vaccine or the placebo, the volunteers simply went on about their normal lives. Well, as normal of a life as you could have given the COVID measures in place, such as mask wearing, social distancing, lockdowns, and so on. And the trial waited a few months to see how many people would get infected. And according to the preliminary results, 90 cases of COVID were found in the placebo group, representing an absolute risk of 0.6%. We get that simply by calculating 90 divided by 15,000, which is 0.006 or 0.6%. Now let's move on to the vaccine group. A total of five cases were determined, representing an absolute risk of 0.03. Therefore, if you calculate 0.6 minus 0.03, you will get an absolute risk reduction of 0.57%, less than 1%. So how did they get 95%? The 95% is the relative risk reduction. It tells you by how much the vaccine reduce the risk of bad outcomes relative to the unvaccinated control group. And it is calculated by dividing the absolute risk reduction by the absolute risk of events in the control group. So for this Moderna example, it would be 0.57 divided by 0.6, which equals 95%. But as mentioned previously, in absolute terms, the risk reduction is just over half of 1%. And of course, 95% sounds a whole lot better than 0.57%. Most people are really surprised when they learn the differences between absolute and relative numbers. Not just for the vaccines. But as I mentioned in another video I did a few years ago called The Absolute Truth About Your Medical Treatment, this is important to understand when evaluating all drug therapies, including cholesterol medications, bone medications, blood pressure, you name it. It's always good to understand the absolute numbers when it comes to any medical treatment. Now, going back to the COVID-19 vaccine trials, Here's a fact that the majority of the public fails to understand. The COVID-19 vaccine trials were not designed to tell us whether the vaccines can reduce hospitalizations, reduce severe illness and death, or even reduce the spread of the disease. 
They were evaluating mild, not serious disease. If someone just had a cough, they were counted as a case. And the participants were not even tested on a regular basis, so you cannot know how many asymptomatic cases there were in either the vaccine or the placebo group. The bar to approval was set so low that we didn't even get answers to the most important questions. And that's why we're told that we must still social distance, we must still wear masks, even when we've been vaccinated. Now, I didn't decide to talk about this today just because I wanted to get into the statistics of it or to break down the studies in every which way possible. No, that, that's not what the intent of this video is. What I really want to talk about is how quick people have been to attack and insult and chastise those who are critical about the vaccine and the measures in general. Even when the opinions expressed are helpful, evidence-based, and deserving of a conversation. In this highly politicized, emotional, and challenging time, I want to highlight three reasons why I believe people are so quick to make wrong assumptions and then feel so strongly about these assumptions that in their minds, attacking others who aren't so quick to agree is completely justified. Reason number one, most people do not understand the results or limitations of studies. And I don't blame them. I don't blame them because I've seen many instances where even journalists showed complete ignorance with their reporting. Um, for example, uh, here's an article published in Global News in Canada where the journalists tried to make sense as to why a nurse in Ottawa tested positive for coronavirus when he had been vaccinated. And this specific journalist believed that the results of these studies show that if you get vaccinated, your risk of catching the virus is just 5%. I'm going to quote exactly from the article. Among the biggest caveats of the Pfizer vaccine, as well as Moderna's version, the only other vaccine currently approved by Health Canada, is an efficacy rating of roughly 95%. That means that in clinical trials of the vaccine, 19 out of 20 people who received the jab showed protection against the virus, while the remaining 5% did not. End of quote. And this is completely false. As I explained at the start of the video, no, the studies did not show that you are 95% protected from catching COVID. It wasn't even designed to do that. The studies were not designed to even show this. They only investigated whether the vaccine can reduce symptomatic cases. This is just another example of the media getting it wrong and doing so often enough that even what is a clear misinterpretation becomes a truth that many people are confident about. Of course, I don't blame too many individuals in the media for making such mistakes. Um, these are journalists that are not necessarily health and science reporters, and they've had to become that almost overnight. So in this era where we need everything to come out so fast and the news outlets are competing with each other uh, and people want information immediately, for sure accuracy will, be, um, will, will suffer somewhat. But here's a thought. We, the public, should accept some level of responsibility to try to raise the quality of, of the dialogue, to help the media to, to report things in, in a more accurate way, as opposed to just sitting back and criticizing everything, or even worse, accepting everything we hear for fact in a lazy way that does nothing to help the situation. Okay, moving on to the second reason that people feel so confident about their opinions on COVID. And here it is. Many people believe that an expert's opinion automatically equals science. So when trusted individuals are speaking, it is as if science itself is speaking. This goes to show that the public generally doesn't understand 
what science is. Here's a quote that I think can help. Science is the belief in the ignorance of experts. If anything, to be scientific means to question and doubt the experts. To look at the data when pharmaceuticals allow it to be released and to evaluate the methods that produce this data and the logic that connects it to the conclusions that pharmaceutical companies, experts, and politicians are making. People are attacking each other. They're calling each other unscientific for not blindly accepting what some experts are saying. But the opposite is true. They are the ones being unscientific by choosing to simply listen to experts and avoid any conversation that questions the current narrative. Where do you think we would be today if throughout history we had put experts ahead of science? Moving on to the third and final reason why I believe people are so quick to judge others who do not necessarily agree with the handling of this pandemic. And here it is. They believe the premise that the vaccine is the only way to end the pandemic. Some politicians have even stated that the vaccine is the passport to our freedom. That's what makes it okay to accept a rushed vaccine and risk the side effects. According to this narrative, the benefits of the vaccine are greater than any potential side effects. And it is regrettable that our political leaders and the medical industrial complex have confused the public into thinking that only this treatment can return life to normal. History for them will be very clear. The world was destroyed by a dangerous virus. The entire population was at risk. Businesses and the economy had to close. Children couldn't go to school. Society was collapsing. And then vaccines rescued the world. That is a narrative that I disagree with. It completely removes any sense of responsibility and accountability from our leaders. And it also relieves the individual of all responsibility and accountability. And that is something that completely undermines the best available evidence we have for how to defeat COVID-19. I wrote a two-part evidence-based article showing how the root cause of the pandemic is our poor state of health and how we can reverse it in just a matter of days and weeks through a proper diet and exercise. We can do more than just sit at home and wait for a rushed medical intervention to save us. We can help ourselves. The part one of my article is called Immunosenescence, the reason older adults are more vulnerable to viruses and how to prevent it. And part two is how nutrition can reverse immune system aging and help defeat COVID-19. I will post the links to both parts of this article below the video. And I welcome everyone to read them and open up the conversation. There is a completely different way of looking at how to defeat COVID. It may not enrich a lot of companies, but I assure you that it is evidence-based and it will enrich your life in many ways. Thank you. Thank you.